Every time I say this is the last potato chip block quilt I'm going to make, there's another and another. It's so hard to stop. Oh my goodness. I have made a bunch of them and this one behind me is a single block. I just added rounds and rounds after another and it is a beautiful scrappy quilt. And while I've made all these quilts, I've also learned a few things, some simple and quick techniques that I want to share with you. But I also want to share the easiest quilting hacks for sizing your potato chip block quilt. There's been a lot of comments and questions that I've had from viewers asking about how to make a rectangle, how to size the quilt a particular way. Well, I chose to take two of them, size them exactly alike, and make a reversible quilt. Wait until you see this. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and there is so much here I want to show you. And then, after putting those two quilts together, I quilted them with diamonds. You are going to love this. So, let's get started. I want to show you how to do this. This is the wisteria quilt that I made, and the wisteria fabric was so pretty done in watercolors, I didn't want to cut it up. So instead of doing the traditional potato chip block, I started with an eight and a half inch square, and it worked out beautifully. I added two rows of rectangles around the block, and it was a 16 inch square when it was finished. And so I made a total of 12, and it made a beautiful little quilt. I love the colors. I wanted it light and filled with pastels and watercolors, and I think it turned out beautifully. Now I want to show you the next quilt. Now here's the other variation. Also starting with an eight and a half inch block, I just kept adding rows and adding rows and adding rows. And you can see here, there are five rows from the center square out. And then I added two rows of low volume with another two rows of the scrappy rectangles. And it's beautiful. I love how this turned out. And I wanted to do something together with both of these quilts. But let me show you my dilemma. What I really wanted to do is make a reversible quilt and put the two of these, one front, one back. But notice the size difference. One's a rectangle and one's a square. So I sat down and, and tried to think through what some different options were. And I figured out a really neat plan to make this work. And it's all about how you use your rectangles. The challenge here is that we have a rectangle and a square. So in order to get these two to work together, we're either going to have to make this a square or this a rectangle, or maybe do a little of both. And that's the solution I came up with. So let me show you how this works. This rectangle was narrower than the square, but longer than the square. So by making it wider, then that would make the square fit right inside here. And the way I made it wider was to put two rows on each side. That's all I needed. You can see around the block, there's two rows right out here. I added two more, and it just added so much more color and interest. I love how it looks. Now, it's still a rectangle but now it's wide enough that this matches the square. But what do I do with the square? How do I get it to fit this length? Well, I did the same thing here, just a little bit different. The width was already fine, and you can see I have the interior block with a low volume with five rows on each side. What I did was add two more rows to the top and bottom, and that made this more of a rectangle. So now both quilts are exactly the same size. And look at this. We added a couple rows on the sides. We added a couple rows on the top and bottom. And now we have two quilts that are exactly the same size. That is just exactly what I needed. But then I've got to put it together. I'm going to baste it and wait till you see the quilting. Have you quilted diamonds before? Oh, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's get started. Let me show you how to do that too. And we are ready to quilt. I have my walking foot on. 
and I have my guide ready. This is the guide I'm actually going to use, but this is for the other side. And there's a little um, clip on the back where this slides in and out so I can adjust how far apart my rows of stitching will be. And then this just follows the stitching and that's what keeps me nice and straight. And then, of course, my quilting needles. I showed you that in the last video. The thing I like about this is when it's on the card, I don't lose it. And then I just fold that back and take my needle out. And I just find it easier to manage when it's on the card. And, of course, quilting gloves. So we are going to get started. I have my 60-degree line drawn. Now, there's a couple lines here. I had started drawing one earlier, and part of it faded away. So I went ahead and drew another one. So disregard the, the double line here. And again, I'm going to lift that up because that's not going to um, affect what I'm working on right now. And I have my stitch up just a little bit. Usually when I'm doing my piecing, I stitch at a 2.5, and when I quilt, I use a 3.0. If I have particularly heavy fabric, um, or even like a uh, like a rag quilt, I'll go to a 3.5, but usually a 3.0 is going to be more than enough. And I start about a half inch off the edge, just so I know that my stitches are in place and good to go. And I'm just going to follow this all the way through. Everything has been spray basted and let me get some threads. That's one thing I do while I quilt is I pull some of those threads out that have, you know, tucked themselves in along the way. All right, so let me go ahead and do this for just a moment. You see how easy that is? It's basted, so when it's spray basted, everything stays in place nicely. And then I just sew on my needle and everything feeds through great. When I go to pause or I need to stop or turn or take a break, whatever the case may be, I do try and stop in a seam because it's not uncommon when you stop, if you move your fabric just a little bit, you may get a jog in the line. And that's really going to be visible in the center of a block as opposed to in the, uh, in the seams. And as I move along, I lift my quilt and kind of move it with me. What I do is I put the ironing board on this side of me and I raise it to the same height as my table. That way the quilt is kind of at the same level and it's not dragging down and off because if it pulls too much, it's going to pull and distort as you're quilting and that can get kind of problematic to deal with. one. Now I have to start in the corner because my ruler can only go that far. And when you are marking your quilt, especially with a, a diagonal like that, you want to make sure that you can go from edge to edge. That way you're going to be nice and uh, even and you know you're, you're in a good place. You know you're right where you need to be. Now, let's see. I don't know. I can put it like right there. How far is that? All right. I want it to be at about two and a half inches. So what I do is I'm lining my ruler up with the stitch, the row of stitching that I already did. And I'm going to count two and a half at my needle and put my guide right on that row of stitching. And now when I start my next row, I'll be at two and a half inches and I'll do that to finish off the quilt. Then periodically I will double check because that can move as you adjust your quilt and you may inadvertently move it. So every once in a while you want to check. With everything in place, I'm going to, if I can grab my needle, or excuse me, grab my thread. These gloves make it all very clumsy. 
there we go and put my guide down so I'm going to line the guide up right with my previous stitch and I start off the quilt and then come on as I quilt through And the walking foot does a great job of moving the fabric at a good pace. Don't try and pull, push, or twist because the walking foot's going to do the work. All you're doing is guiding it and you should be watching here. Don't worry about what your needle or the walking foot's doing. Just make sure your guide is right along that uh, stitching line. And then I do kind of press my fabric. I don't pull it, but I just make sure that it's taut and there's, there's no wrinkles. All right. And then I do clip at the end. And I want to just show you how that looks. Now I'm using a cream color thread on the top and bottom um, with as much white and light fabric as there uh, uh, there is in this quilt on both sides. I think that'll work out good. The other alternative is to use a variegated with multicolors, which would be fun too. But uh, this works good for me. I'm okay with it. All right, hold that thread. Line ourselves up. And we're off. work your way from point to point. try and pull that top thread away from uh, the needle so it doesn't bunch up. If you hold it off to the side, you're not going to have a uh, have it knot up on you. I just want to get to this corner. And then I'll turn the quilt around and show you how that works. And then I'll go ahead and get this uh, angle done across the quilt. And then I will come back and we'll do the other direction. And that's where we can see the diamonds. Now the other thing I do is I always just quilt over the corner. That way as I'm, you know, quilting or binding, whatever the case may be, I don't have to worry about those corners flipping over. So let me go ahead. I'm going to turn the quilt around and I'll show you how that works. I'll be right back. Okay, now I went to the opposite corner and I rolled up my quilt so I can tuck it in here. And then as I continue to move across, I'll unroll it as I go. Now the other thing I want to show you is when you're moving your quilt and moving things around, this gauge can get caught on the fabric and can be pulled or pushed back and forth. So like I say, periodically you want to check and make sure it's in the right place. 
I'm using two and a half inches, so I put my needle on the edge of the ruler and make sure that my gauge is right at two and a half, which is there, so we're in good shape. And now what I'm going to do is line up right here. But you notice that the gauge is all the way back here and I don't have a line. So the other thing you can do is take your ruler and put it right on the stitching. And then just let your gauge kind of, you know, lift it a bit. There we go. Like that. So that your gauge is right on the edge where the ruler is. And then you can start to sew from there. So that sort of helps because depending on the direction that you're going to be um, quilting, it can vary whether you be, you know, particularly closer in the other direction. As I'm getting ready to do my next row, I'm going to hold on to this and, and kind of help push it along. And I don't want the fabric to get... Um, pulled back. I want it to stay going nice and smoothly through the, uh, through the walking foot. And I'll go as far as I can. Stop in a seam if that's possible, depending on where you are. Kind of grab a big handful of quilt and work my way through. Wasn't sure I'd get that far. Now the first few rows, when you're coming on on this side where all the quilt is, you know, tucked inside your machine, can be a bit challenging because it's a lot to maneuver. But just go ahead and do what you can, a little at a time, and just take it slow and easy, and it'll work just fine. my seam but I wasn't paying attention I was watching my quilt on this side I want to make sure there's no wrinkles underneath or you know nothing folding under and keep everything nice and straight where it needs to be And again here, if you're more comfortable, you can certainly take your ruler and run it along there. And then you can just set your gauge next to your ruler. Just like that. All right. I just want to show you the back. So you can see all we're doing is putting in these straight lines two and a half inches apart. And then we'll come back after and do the other direction to get the diamond in. So, and I'll just continue working across the quilt to the other side, and then when I get there and ready to turn around, I'll check back in with you and show you how that works. And here we are. You can see that the quilting is all finished in this direction, and we have nice even lines, and it looks terrific on the back side as well. But I want to show you how to get the next set of lines in, because... There are a couple ways you can do it, and some will give you the results you want, and that doesn't always happen. I know the first time when I was doing diamonds, I kept getting squares, and I couldn't figure out why. So the first line we laid in, we set our lines at 30 degrees, or excuse me, at 60 degrees, and that's this angle here, and that's 60 degrees in relation to the side of the, uh, the quilt. Now, if we do another 60 degrees, you see how we're getting right across, straight across, and all we're going to do is get little squares. A diamond is not square. It has a narrow corner, and then it has this wider corner, and we need to then use the 30 degree angle to get that other 
there we go, to get that other line. So by doing this, let me go ahead and draw that in. I want to get it as far over as I can. Oh, there's my 30 right there. Okay. Here we are. And so now I'm going to draw that line in. And let me just show you, if I draw the other next to it, you see how we're getting this diamond right there? There it is. And that's what we want it to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start in this, uh, this corner and then I'll work my way across the quilt and we're going to be finished. We're just about there. I fear it'll take me maybe another hour and it should all be done. Here's a view of the diamonds. They look wonderful. Oh my gosh. I have about half the quilt done. I'm having a machine malfunction and I have to go to the shop tomorrow. It's uh, acting up in a very strange way and I have no idea what to do. So I've got a lot of the quilting. I just have the last corner that I'll get finished and then I'll post a uh, finished picture of this on the, uh, on the community tab. I hope that you are going to give this diamond quilting a try. It really is easy and quick. And you see just how what a wonderful pattern it makes. It looks like it's a lot harder than what it actually is. The key is getting your ruler down in the right spot and you can kind of eyeball it. You'll know that if you're not doing it right, you'll get squares or, or funny little parallelograms and they're going every which way. But you uh, just follow the the uh, dimensions on the ruler and you'll be in good shape so there we are a reversible quilt oh my goodness i love how this turned out this is such a fun fun idea i'm having a great time with this let's look up at that quilting just a little bit closer here's a close-up view of the quilting i just think it looks wonderful this quilt came out awesome i love this block and it has been such fun to play with it, with these two quilts doing the, the single block on one side with that low volume, and then on the other side doing the wisteria blocks. This just came out beautiful. I love how this looks, and I can't wait to see it finished. But for now, this is it. This is what I have for you. Thank you for hanging in there. And I so appreciate you being here with me. You have a wonderful rest of your day. And think diamonds.